Well, 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 if it isn't the usual suspects clamoring for their weekly allotment of news summaries. The head of Japan's nuclear regulator has delivered some harsh words to the people in charge of electric power utilities. He says they've totally failed to convey what they have learned from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear accident. Nuclear Regulation Authority Chairman Shuichi Tanaka was speaking to Shojiro Matsura, Chairman of the Japan Nuclear Safety Institute. The institute was set up by electric companies last November to help improve safety at nuclear power plants. This was the first exchange of views between the two organizations. Tanaka had a blunt assessment of the utility's actions. He said the accident was caused by the arrogance of science and technology. He said nuclear operators have utterly failed to communicate what efforts they are making to improve safety, and he urged the institute to give better instructions to the utilities. Matsuda raised a different concern. He said keeping Japan's nuclear power plants offline for a long time would have a negative impact on what he called the culture of safety. <laughs> We felt that putting our users in mortal danger for a quick buck was the right move. All of Japan's 48 reactors are currently offline. Utilities have applied for safety screenings to restart 17 reactors at 10 plants. You couldn't make this shit up! Now Japan's crippled nuclear plant have restarted their efforts to contain a growing problem. They're pumping up groundwater to stop it from collecting on the Fukushima Daiichi site. Who's your daddy? Uh. Crews with Tokyo Electric Power Company began what they call a bypass operation early this month. Their strategy is to pump up groundwater so it doesn't flow into the plant and get contaminated. When do you want it? They hope to start releasing it into the ocean next month. What do you want? The engineers are using 12 wells on a hillside to check the groundwater for contamination. They suspended their bypass operation last week because a radioactive substance in one of those wells exceeded a safety target. Measurements later showed the radiation had fallen, so the engineers restarted their pumps. The water is going into tanks. Workers say they'll check it for contamination there before they release it into the ocean. Hey, you want it? They say they may stop pumping from any well where radiation rises. After Chernobyl, we finally hear All kinds of cancer went up the next year Hard to interpret, says OPCS Can't understand it, well here is a guess Low-level isotopes from the Ukraine Drifted to Wales on the wind and the rain Rainfall is higher in Bangor than Kent Cancer in Wales is up 30% We're breathing strontium Locking it into the structure of cellular DNA And each of beta decay In an occasional, rather mutational way Kills us even new labor can see what it means Radioisotopes alter your genes Ghosts of dead babies will give them no rest Till the dosimetry's been reassessed Wombling, strombling, banker to Kent Telling the news of the second event Telling the story all and two scenes A radioisotopes alter your genes Nuclear establishment, castle of lies Children are dying in front of your eyes Born with no limbs, with two heads or no brain Born to a life of incurable pain Nuclear subsidies victims will pay While you take a pension and tiptoe away Don't reassure us cause we always knew Yours was a story too slick to be true Well, breathing strontium Locking it into the structure of cellular DNA And each a beta decay In an occasional, rather mutational way Kills us Nobody's hiding these nuclear crooks Government stooges aren't cooking the books Only the mothers are guilty of crimes Bearing their children in nuclear times 
radio isotopes float around free Up in the atmosphere, up near the sea So many diseases genetically linked Strontium wombles will soon be extinct Cause we're breathing strontium Locking it into the structure of cellular DNA And each beta decay in an occasional rather mutational way After Chernobyl, we finally hear All kinds of cancer went up the next year Hard to interpret, says OPCS Can't understand it, well here is a guess Low-level isotopes from the Ukraine Drifted to Wales on the wind and the rain Rainfall is higher in Bangor than Kent Cancer in Wales is up 30% we're breathing strontium, locking it into the structure of cellular DNA, and each beta decay in an occasional, rather mutational way kills us. Even new labor can see what it means. Radioisotopes alter your genes. Ghosts of dead babies will give them no rest till the dosimetry's been reassessed. Wombling, strumbling, banker to Kent, telling the news of the second event, telling the story all and two scenes. A radioisotopes alter your genes. Nuclear establishment, castle of lies. Children are dying in front of your eyes Born with no limbs, with two heads or no brain Born to a life of incurable pain Nuclear subsidies victims will pay While you take a pension and tiptoe away Don't reassure us, cause we always knew Yours was a story too slick to be true Well, breathing strontium District nuclear near uh, Fukushima, Daiichi, have faced a lot of hardships over the three years since the nuclear accident there, including homes off limits, shops closed, and medical services suspended. But things are getting a little easier now that the local hospital has reopened. Kids? Simi, they won't die. In fact, that'll be our motto. They won't die. The Odaka district of Minamisoma City was designated an evacuation zone after the accident at the plant. It's located 15 kilometers to the south. Residents have been visiting their homes during the day, but their local hospital remained closed until now. Outpatients can consult with doctors at the reopening hospital, reopened hospital on three days during the week, yet it's still not accepting in inpatients. When I needed to see a doctor, I had no choice but to go to Fukushima City and spend half a day just getting there. So it's very helpful. It's my mission to help people who want to return. I'm happy to support them. The city hopes the reopened hospital will help more residents return to the town once the evacuation order is fully lifted. I mean, to me, that's just pure insanity. I mean, I, I can't even understand that. Of Japan's nuclear power plants offline, the country has been increasingly relying on fossil fuels for its energy needs. But now a massive solar power farm has gone into operation that will be able to light up thousands of homes. The one million square meter solar park is situated in an industrial area along the coast of Oita Prefecture, southern Japan. The project was built by Marubeni Corporation. The park has about 340,000 solar panels, making it one of the biggest solar farms in Japan. It's expected to generate more than 82,000 kilowatts, enough to power 30,000 households. Officials at Marubeni say the electricity will be sold to a local utility and the plant will be in operation for 20 years. We'd like to contribute to expanding renewable energy, however small it may be. A major construction firm and a shipbuilder have already built large-scale solar farms nearby. Tokyo are heading out into their fields as the warmer weather ushers in green tea harvesting season. 
The Sayama area near Tokyo boasts 1,000 hectares of tea fields. The plants produce thick leaves there to give brews a distinct flavor. Farmers are carefully picking the first flush leaves. But some say they're worried the unusual snowfall this year will impact their harvest. Uh, uh, everything's under control. Situation normal. What happened? Uh, it has like weapons malfunction. We had heavy snow over the winter, but the weather has gotten much better this month. That should make the leaves rich in flavor. He says he hopes his customers enjoy the flavor. After a major natural disaster like an earthquake, getting enough food and water to victims is cr critical and difficult. The people who provide the food need training to feed hundreds of people. But a volunteer group has discovered that not enough people have been trained. To make people more aware of this, a group held a competition. About 20 teens took part in the event near Tokyo. Some came from the Tohoku region, devastated by the earthquake and tsunami three years ago. Also participating were nutritionists with expertise in hygiene management. In this competition, it's not only the menu that's being judged. The judges operate on the assumption that there are plenty of big problems that bring severe consequences. Masahide Kubo is leader of the citizens group that hosted the competition. Kubo and his team went to the Tohoku area right after the 2011 disaster. They volunteered, distributing food at 120 shelters over a four-month period. Kubo observed a lot of problems between inexperienced volunteers and evacuees. About 8,000 volunteer groups were delivering food to the disaster-stricken areas, but 60 percent of them didn't have enough experience cooking for such a large number of people. Six months after the disaster, Kubo and his team visited evacuation shelters. They surveyed more than 500 people about their experience with the volunteers who provided the food. The dishes were so dirty that I lost my appetite. I was told that I should be thankful just to be able to eat. Three out of every ten people said their interaction with the volunteers wasn't satisfying. Kubo realized that volunteers have to be trained. For the past two years, this competition has been held in the Tohoku region. But this year, he decided to hold it in the capital region for the first time. The idea is to prepare for the possibility of a large-scale earthquake in the Tokyo metropolitan area. At this event, they noticed a substantial difference between teams with experience and those who had none. This squad comes from Ishinomaki, a city that was hit by the disaster. During the aftermath, we couldn't wash dishes because there was no running water. We are covering the dishes with plastic wraps and bags so that we can reuse them many times. On the other hand, one team that had no experience was saying, Today we serve bowls of rice with a topping of raw tuna, but in a real-life situation we probably wouldn't be able to use raw fish. For example, a food provider might say that 500 meals will be served at 12 o'clock, but in reality, only 400 meals were served, and in the late afternoon. A situation like this can cause trouble, and we must have training to avoid it. Kubo is working on a manual that will help to spread his knowledge about emergency food preparation for large groups. I want to compile this manual so that people who volunteer in food supply can understand the whole process clearly, including ways to sign up for it. Disaster can strike at any moment, so I want to prepare the manual as fast as possible. As they get ready for the next possible disaster, Kubo's team passes along lessons from providing food for victims of the earthquake. Having graciously spread my knowledge to the uneducated masses, I now return to the stately, elegant ranks of news announcer society. <laughs>